Ring that bell, Aaron. <laughs> Today is May 7th, 2017, and school is officially in. Cue the theme music. <laughs> hey. Uh, Rosie Perez, what is it? See, I'm sad I can't see you doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> that intro way too long. We need to cut it. No, we don't. Oh my God, stop that. <laughs> hello, uh, hello everybody, tuning in, and this is the Schools and Podcast. Um, I am Mitch, and I am joined today by my two illustrious co-hosts. Um, Ooh, and- Right, what's up, and, what's up? and Aaron, what's going on, y'all? And we are um, on our first podcast today. Like we're all excited and giddy, like small children. Yes, we are. <laughs> Yay! We're so excited. And uh, today is theme theme and lesson is the Legend Show. But before we get into Legends. Which we're going to talk about a little about what constitutes a legend, like what's the definition of a legend and, you know, like what's about, you know, what's what's the status that you have to maintain to be a legend and can you have your legendary status revoked because apparently that's what's happening out here in these streets right now. I don't know why, but, (laughs) you know, people getting their titles snatched and stuff and, you know, and crazy things are happening. But um, we want to first let you know who we are and why we are and how we um, sort of came to be um, together. Uh, I used to be Aunt and Aaron's high school English teacher or one of their English teachers. I wasn't the only one, but I, I, I talked to them in what? 10th grade, right, y'all? Yeah, yeah. We can't forget about certain certain legends. What legends? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, Oh, thank you. Well, I just happen to be. See how Aaron be doing me? He be giving me like like side neck shots all the time. <laughs> like half. He's like you just. He was like you just happen to be one of them. Like there's well, like three, four know. other ones. But you know, <laughs> this is this is legend show. Uh, I'm getting my legendary status snatched on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what that's okay because um the chick in question today lauren hill um he snatched her legendary status and, and and at one time uh aaron told me i was not um i was not good enough to be on par with lauren hill so i guess everybody's getting reevaluated in, 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 in this day and age it don't really matter you got to stuff your taxes a little longer to be on Lauren Hill level. Uh, I, I guess so, apparently. But, um, <laughs> but like, yeah, back in the gap with these two. And this was back in the day, about, this was about 2003, back in Philly when I was first um, teaching. Yeah. Where, where those violins at? <laughs> 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 it was like, um, you know, most of the, the um, students that I taught at that time, I couldn't really have discussions with them about hip hop. And I love hip hop. I always have since I was eight years old, since the very beginning when I knew, you know, like like when I first heard Yes, Yes, Y'all, like that, it was it, you know, and I loved hip hop. But I couldn't talk to my students about hip hop anymore because they would say things like hot fire. <laughs> and, and, and I, I'll be trying to have like like actual real conversations with them about hip hop and they would be telling me about like 
album sales and I'd be like, uh that how does that have anything to do about someone's merit? Nah. And then I was like like one day I saw these two kids over in the corner in their class. It was these two and they were arguing with some other kids at their little table about how who cares how many albums they sold if they're whack. And I was like, Oh, okay, maybe <laughs> <laughs> It's like maybe they're not so bad. And then they started talking about um, Ether and Nazir one day, and I was like, okay, these kids know a little bit of something. And then they started beating on my table <laughs> and singing "Commons Come Close," and they just kept repeating over and over again. You even, you even give my daughter love. You need to give my daughter love. <laughs> you need to give my daughter love. You make that sound like pretty disruptive students. <laughs> you were disruptive. <laughs> but you were, you know, but, but it was it was love. It was in a good way. And so then I started talking to them like right before cause I had you guys right before lunch. Yeah, uh, yeah unfortunately. <laughs> and and then we were just sitting there talking and then Anthony's planning for down. He was like, "I'm not going to lunch. I'm, I'm sitting right here." And then Aaron was like, "Okay, well, I'm not going." Yeah, right. I remember. I remember particularly asking you to put on Rock Him a lot. Yeah, you did. Yeah, he was going through that phase. But I mean, these two like sat down and they just was like decided. Well, well we aren't going to go to lunch. We're just going to sit here and talk about hip hop, among other things. And, yeah, but we had to talk about a lot though, like a whole lot. That was like the focus most of the time. But we didn't talk about the things too. It just happened to be the source of everything. Yeah, he said. Aaron said hip hop is the source of everything. It's that's that's really all. All I really cared about at the time. Yeah. yeah, I still did too at that time. Like I was really still heavily into hip hop, and I really cared about what happened to it. But um, so. Then we started doing our little thing every day, and we were doing a podcast basically because we would sit there and wax philosophical about hip hop all day, and other kids would wander in and out. And then all of a sudden, certain adults whose names will remain unspoken. Uh, a cat academy leaders. <laughs> academy. Academy leaders who are hating Alleg- on us. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't. Uh, they didn't like that. That you guys were in my class, and there wasn't anything untoward going on in there. Like the door was always open. But you know, if you're on the outside looking in, that's understandable. No, I'm not really. They were just haters. <laughs> and they were like real haters. They weren't like fake haters that like actually just had their own opinion about something. They were like actual haters. So, so then we just made our shit legit by them becoming my classroom aides. And so then... I do believe I got paid for that in senior year. I yep. Believe. For and, and and that went on for two years. For two years, you guys were like that in my classroom. Yep. 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 I had my roster legitimately switched. Yep. And so That's we decided time. that if we were gonna do a podcast, we might as well just do it with each other because we were already doing it anyway. Yeah, you know. Much. Yeah. Continuing on then, <laughs> basically. It didn't make sense. Why are people sending me shit on Marco Polo right now? Stop it! I don't even know what that is. It's just stupid. I'm telling you, life is like oh like a bowl of apps now. It's just a bowl of apps. <laughs> it's just all apps. It used to be about chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, why you get this shit? <laughs> It's a bowl of apps, you know? This is crazy. It's a bowl of apps. Yeah, it's a bowl of, it's like it's a, it's a bowl of apps. Like, you know, I'm waiting for the... I don't know what I did with my life before I had apps app to come out. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that's not far off. Like, I, I just... I don't understand. But that was a, that was a sidebar, but... 
Yeah, so, you know, so we're going to do our thing, and we hope people like our thing. It's a mix of myself, who's a Gen Xer. I'm not telling you my age. Fuck you. And, <laughs> and, and, the, and these two older millennials, they're at the top of the millennial cohort. They're I, don't not, claim, I, don't, I don't claim that. I, I don't. That. I know you don't, but it claims you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I it pretty that. much. It pretty much is what it is. So many. Yeah, like, like you don't really so. have much to. Do. Well, not necessarily though, because like Aaron, there's some people that kind of defy those odds. Like Chuck D. Chuck D. is not technically a Gen Xer, but he exists in the in the plane of Gen Xers because of his career and when his career took off. Right. Yeah, I get but that, he was though. actually born in 1960, which makes him not a Gen Xer. A very, very late baby boomer. Mm-hmm. Which is really weird. But, um. Uh, so I, I'm the new Chuck D. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be in worse company. You really could be in worse company than Chuck D. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. How about you, the so, new flavor, please? Oh no, no, you're a flavor flavor. No, 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 no. <laughs> there should not be a new flavor flavor at all. <laughs> and one flavor was enough. One flavor was enough. Yeah, one flavor was too much. <laughs> and I love Flav. You know, flavor most, put it on your toes. Uh, uh, you know. I love that song. <laughs> I love that track. Cold, cold, cold <laughs> lamping. I love that song. That song with Ice Cube too. <laughs> They only have one thing. Oh my that. god. No. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of legendary, Flavor Flay was legendary, so it's public enemy, you know. Yeah. I mean. Um, obviously, obviously. And I think some legends kinda freeze. Um, and with that, let's go into first period or second period really today, because we're gonna have three periods. So that's just kinda like our first little period because that was advisory. We wanted to do a little doubt. Yeah, right? Advisory. <laughs> oh, you know what? That is crazy. Cause when I taught, when I taught at the school, there was no damn advisory. Only in Philly did under, oh, under we have advisory. Never had advisory Philly in Detroit. I heard that before. Mm-hmm. Philly understood the students. Kids don't want to come in and get right to work. They want to sit down and eat their junk food and all that and bust it up. Chill. And like talk, you know, talk, talk shit and play um, sad violins. <laughs> yeah. Advisory was first period for us, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. technically. Mm-hmm. Unless you got there yeah. early enough for breakfast. You got there early enough. For or breakfast. if you got there late and you had to sit in the fucking lunch room. That shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that shit used to be funny to, depending on who you was down there with. <laughs> so do you guys want to say anything about the the whole classroom hookup? Well, oh, you know, you said, uh, you any of your off, favorite, any of your favorite, you know, moments. Well, I'm, I'm, you, I got attached to playing an underdog, trying to get y'all to listen to sheep and stuff like that. Oh God! <laughs> I think we still have that dynamic going on. Yeah, we do. Because <laughs> nobody's that. still getting me to listen to sheep. That's still not and happening. She, <laughs> she killed that joint <laughs> on um, the seven EP. Oh my god, he's still talking about Sheik. It's like 14 years later and this Negro is still talking about Sheik. Sheik is heavily slept on, heavily, heavily. Whatever. I will I will give Styles T a shake and everybody knows. I, of course, will play Jada, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, you still got to, I, something tells me to have a listen to walk with me. All right. We might have to do it for the show now, possibly. I might have to break down after 15 years and finally play the cheek. All right, but we talking about legends, all right? We ain't talking about the D-block. We talking about the legends. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, he just said, said hey. D-block ain't legends. Yeah, yeah I'm saying. It's, it's thousands, millions of people out there who disagree with you. Oh, uh, boo! Where's my booze at? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I boo! Definitely, oh, let's just add it right now. Boo! <laughs> 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 Whatever. You question Lord Hill every two seconds, but D Block gets to be legends. Come on, man. Seriously. Yeah, yeah Lord Hill basically a one hit wonder. Oh All right, but God, by that, by that, she a five hit wonder. 
Sorry but the lock, the lock is a conglomerate. The locks, the locks together is a one hit wonder because their only their first album <laughs> is actually dope. Only their first album. What you talking about? The joint with Diddy? No, I'm talking about We Are the Streets. We Are the Streets is their only is their only dope album. But they all got individual works too, individual catalog. I mean, they got individual catalogs that you know can be ser- considered. Um, and they so, so they so they like MOP legendary. Like they 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 oh pop off. Oh my god! Of oh, seriously, <laughs> the same thing can be said for the Fugees. Like, what are you talking about right now? Where's Lori Hill been at the past thirty-seven years? Um, allegedly. Stuck her <laughs> Uh, allegedly, she's been taking time away from the industry. Mm-hmm. And, and booking concerts. Booking concerts. And not showing, and and not showing up on time. And not showing right? the fuck up. Well, because yeah. the chi, because 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 the chi has to flow properly for her to get on stage. The chi ain't the chi wasn't nothing wrong with the chi when she booked the show. <laughs> <laughs> she had no problems doing that. <laughs> so so um nice segue there and so seriously <laughs> let's let's, 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 let's let's start first period I can't um so first period let's define what legend means. So the dictionary meaning um is an extremely famous or notorious person especially in a particular field in this case we're talking about hip-hop and not not the whole talk won't consist of hip-hop but we're talking about like you know largely about hip-hop right now um but there's also a second aspect to legend that's that's like uh historical but unauthenticated like like folklore or folk tales that are attached to it that are not mm-hmm. you know that that like haven't been able to be um nailed down n- right nailed down as actual facts so sometimes yeah. l- legend can mean some shit that may or may not have really transpired or happened but now since it's been passed down so many times it's become solidified as part of what you feel is true, even though it may or may not be. All right, so, so like, I feel like you have an example of that on hand. Oh, we got a real good example of that, because, like, we just went through that this past <laughs> week with Funkmaster Flex just screaming and yelling, he, he was a lie! Tupac he lied! Lie. <laughs> it lied. It was a lie. It was all a lie. Was he but, Was he sober? Uh, you know what? I was not really. I couldn't tell if that was the truth or not. Maybe he was sober. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know. I say he. I say he probably wasn't. But he really, he really felt that shit when he was saying it, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guarantee you it. It from the rumors and things that happened, and from the things that went on with Tupac, you know, it. it I don't. I don't. I can't discredit it. I can't count it out. Like I. I can't say it's not true. Mm-hmm. Right. Believe all it. kinds of things. I mean, all kinds of things go down. Like we're shifting our our talk about who we think is a legend. Like we just had this whole conversation about whether or not. You know, D blocks are legends <laughs> <laughs> versus whether you know the Fuji slash Lauren Hill are legends at this point. Right. Like, so are we saying like are we saying like what we what we consider to define a legend? Yeah, like and and, and Aaron. Aaron, what do you think? Oh what do you constitute legendary status? Like what do you think a legend is? Um, me personally, I feel like um I feel like influence influence defines a legend and um it's funny because like when we watched that uh that uh tupac tupac likes video <laughs> it made me it made me realize that um tupac's influence is that much bigger than biggie's and as far as like you know legends go i would i would probably say that uh pac is a you know uh 
a legend, like uh, even a bigger legend than um what we probably consider big. And that's independent of the music, though. Yeah. I mean, but that's yeah. part of that definition. That's part of that definition that I was just right. talking about, because it's actually right. entered right. into folklore now. Like that whole thug life aspect of his career. Most people, if you look at the things that some people were saying at the time, if you look at like Tretch, there were interviews by Tretch or interviews by folks that were actually really close to him. Interviews by like one of his closest friends was um, Shock G. From, that's from his Tretch days. Brody by nature for those who don't know. Yeah, for those who don't know. And Shock G from Digital Underground. Or the Humpty Dance. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, or, or, or who was also Humpty Hump. He was he was actually both. He was Shock G and Humpty Hump with the funny nose. There's a shame we can't explain that, but okay. Right? Right? You have to consider the listener. You do have to consider the listener. That's very true. But, yeah. um... Tupac was once a roadie with um, Digital Underground, and that's how he got his start. He was with them for some for some time, and then he was he finally did like a little verse with them on um, All same the song. World, yep. same on same song, and he and Shock G were extremely close. And Shock G will tell you to this day that that person that you saw that was Thug Life and that was he said that wasn't Tupac. That was just him acting. Right, you, and you know why I agree with that completely because you see the difference uh, in Pac between albums like Strictly for My Niggas and um, Me Against the World. You see the difference between that and All Eyes on Me and Machiavelli album. It's a big but, difference. But it's because when he, you know, should belt him out of jail. And I mean, when you're on death row, you can't be making. You know, it's pro black, Black Panther. That pro record. That pro record. Right. That pro record. That, like, like, I mean, you can't shout out a side of Shakur on every record. It's just, like, that's not what your agenda is anymore because she yeah, bailed you out. Now you have to get on records and start screaming Thug Life and say, fuck Biggie. And, like, you have to go in the direction that that label is going. And that's why he lied. <laughs> 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 now, if you let, might be a, I mean, if you <laughs> if you let Funk Black tell it, I mean, but it's more than likely it's probably true because there were other things going on in and around at that time that didn't have anything to do with that and. You know, I'm not going to open my mouth and say certain things because, you know, I, I don't want people to come after me because it's just a podcast. But, <laughs> you know, there were there were a bunch of rumors floating around during that time about whether or not and who was actually involved in that shooting with Tupac. Yep. You haven't lost it. So I wouldn't just discredit... Um, Funk master, but see, everybody is so pissed because you have all these folks that are into the legend and the folklore of Tupac, and they weren't even born when this happened. They were born maybe the year that it happened or years later. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. But you know, and now, you know, good question. Where was he said? Why, he said he said something about Ti. He was like, "You was only ten. I was around." <laughs> why didn't he? Why didn't he mention these things at the time? Who? Flex. He said he said something back then. People did say things back then, but it it it, it would be largely silence because it was a machine, the same way it is now. But you got to remember, the internet didn't exist. So there was no social media. It was easy to silence things. A lot easier. Right. You just made it go away. You could have said that. And that wasn't gonna (laughs) Well and and then at that point too you gotta figure that that any publicity is still good publicity and they were they were knee deep into the East Coast, West Coast you know, bullshit at the uh, time and yeah. that shit was selling records. Like people were buying into that shit. And again, that created more 
um, you know, fodder for the press and for, um, and it and it just gave you more for the folklore, and it killed those two. Like, mm-hmm. our, like we killed Biggie and Tupac. I I feel bad about it. Like, serious. The record company yeah. killed Biggie and Tupac. But no, we killed them too because we fed because we fed into that dumb shit. You had lost it. I was too young to buy a Big and Tupac album. Y'all told me don't do that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying you did it, and I'm saying my generation did that kind of shit. I'm saying all of this shit that went down happened on my generation's watch. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, we somebody fucked up a lot it. of shit. Somebody definitely dropped the ball. But if we talking about we are we talking about legends now. So if you buy into the fact that um Tupac lied about the situation and turned it into what it is, like do that take away from his legendary status? No. And that's the question. But but that's the no. question. I you know what, in it a might, way, Aaron, it actually it makes it the way more, you look at it. Right. But it, it makes it more to, of a legend because it just adds to the mystique. You have lost. Mm. Mm-hmm. It paints it in a different light, but it just adds to the, the legend. Uh huh. Because those folks who who so did not know what was going, you can't tell them shit. They're they're like hook, line, and sinker into that. You can't the, smash the their fact whole. The that the world reacted to it the way that it did just proves it that yeah, you know, the legend yeah. Was Yep. That's why that's why I always appreciate that I had older people around me at the time because like um like my brother used to tell me he'd be like he would tell me like when Pac was when Pac first came out, when Tupacalypse Nail had came out, it was people talking about him, but he was like a lot of people wasn't feeling Pac, especially in Philly, like nobody was really digging Pac when Tupacalypse Nail came out. You know, no, like, they don't really he... like I still don't really like Tupacalypse now. Oh yeah, my god, right. I love but, Tupacalypse now. I right, love it. Moment, it's all right. It's all right. But yeah, but um, it's funny because nowadays, you know, um, you could like people feel like you know Pac had been popping since the beginning of his career. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they wasn't around to experience it. Well, I mean that mm-hmm. happens with everybody. Like people, like some people look at other people like that that we call in question, like Nas. His his career, like he started out out of the gate, just like you know, making everybody go, "Oh my God, it's the second coming of Rakim," you know, or whatever. Nothing yeah, Jesus, like that. <laughs> Jesus, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> on the Rest on, on yeah, basically <laughs> on the um on the, on the live at the barbecue John with, um, with extra P, but um right. they like now all of a sudden. Everybody's like taking his crowns away or they keep trying to every two seconds, but people will fight you tooth and nail, which I am one of those people trying to take his crowns away because they forget the other stuff that he's done. Like, I don't like this whole like discredit of him. You were just talking today about this, Aaron, about how you put on God's son. You were like, this shit is, you know, it's still superior to other shit that you're listening to. Right. And it's, and it's nice how you can go back and appreciate it even more after, you know, that just tell you that it aged well. Like, yep. You know, and that's, 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 that's part of your legendary status, too. Like, yeah. I mean, your shit can be, your shit can be good now. Like, these people that, that are out now, that shit's not going to age well. It's no, it's not. Note. It's a footnote. Not even that. Mm-mm. Yeah. Like, I mean, I go back it. now. Go ahead. Somebody, somebody was saying something about how like uh, songs back in the day didn't age well, and nobody thought about it at the time. Like uh, for example, uh, another bad creation with Aisha. You know, like they can't perform that years later down the line. That <laughs> yeah, that was the rap good. critic. That was the rap critic. He's like, he's like, you can't be like thirty years old singing Aisha on stage. Exactly. You know, and like people don't. <laughs> Yeah, people don't think about that at the time. They just thinking about, you know, oh well, this is a work right now. It's a hit, you know, like people gonna mess with it. And like I don't think served. anybody right now cares about cares enough about this culture to want to be legendary status. How about that? And instead for somebody like a Kendrick yeah. or a J. Cole, like they give a shit. There's, right. there's people that are overlooked though, like you don't forget the underground is still strong. That's where all the all the time is. is at. Yeah, that's true. Those are, it's filled with people that care about legendary and still care about the culture, but they're not getting the 
They're not getting a shine. Yeah. They're not getting a, They're not. Like the average listener don't know nothing about that. They program the what you call it, like the minute made generation. They yeah. program yeah. having yeah. everything served yeah. up. Like you're here for yeah. a minute and then they want the next big thing. Yep. It's funny it's funny like um y'all bringing up Kendrick and Cole right now, but I'm I come to realize that they're getting attention for like a lot of the wrong reasons. Like they get they get put in this uh category of, you know, dope intellectual MCs for like the wrong reason though. Like people not listening to them to hear, you know, what they really talking about. They just hear Yeah, it. you know what? I I've, I've noticed that about Kendrick especially, um Yeah. Aaron. They don't. I think he noticed it too. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah, I think he do, and that's why I think the album that he, the this last album, sounds the way it does because he notices mm, it. Mm. Yeah. That's really sad, yeah. though. That's really, really sad. Yeah. But it sells records. Oh. He's got this balance. He's got this balance where he's selling records, but he's still doing what he want to do artistically. That makes me want to do this. <laughs> this is horrible. Like, like we gotta do so much better, people. We can't just be letting. Like the other day when they were talking about, you know, just letting any old thing like Lil Yachty. Right. Like we can't just be letting this sub this par substandard shit. We need more stuff that's gonna enter the legendary status. Into the culture, right? And, and we need to pop that shit up. Can't you know, because you know that. Look what happened to Joe Button. <laughs> no, the fuck you can't, this <laughs> guy. You know what needs to happen is more people need to just start. Like, like I was telling you all the day, when we didn't want some shit in our culture, like there were so many songs dissing MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice back in the day it was fucking ridiculous we didn't want that shit in our culture and we just jumped on it and we ran that shit out on a rail we did not yeah. fuck with Tim Don. Tim Don. you know what's funny about the PM Dawn thing I was reading something about that earlier and somebody was like PM uh, Dawn yeah yeah somebody was like they wish that uh, somebody would do the same thing to these new rappers like KRS did but it's exactly. funny because like in comparison, I like PM Dawn. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like I can I can listen to some fucking PM Dawn compared to you know this this shit. Like PM Dawn got some shit. Don't even front though. <laughs> but wait, for those who don't know, what happened to PM Dawn? Yep. So what happened to PM Dawn was, um, they came through with some you know some watery, flowery. You know, peace signs, and you know they were like, and KRS one from BDP's mind, from Boogie Down Productions' mind. Uh-huh. Um, they they were they were damaging the culture with their you know wishy washy flower power child. Now they like thought was the same way, but they like kind of had a harder edge. Like yeah, you know. That's why- it was kind of like yeah. it was kind of like daylight soul meets LL Cool J. <laughs> no, no, they were more, they were they were like they were more like daylight soul meets Will Smith, really. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Aunt. sorry, Aunt. sorry, 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 kind of sort of and he didn't like that shit and he tried to you know he like came at them um and they you know kind of had like a, a little bit of back and well PM Dog kind of threw some hands though <laughs> like but dude, I heard the dude that did the actual throwing was like a kung fu type karate yeah, fighter like, yeah uh-huh. <laughs> like, like that was probably a bad idea. like you should <laughs> Yeah. You shouldn't have, like, actually thro- thrown, like, you know, actual hands like that. But, I mean, that's going on in the culture, you know, early on a lot. Like, yeah. I even, didn't like even. Biggie. Yeah. I didn't like, but, but now I hear Biggie, and I realize how lyrical Biggie is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah, I, didn't really, I didn't really care too much for Biggie either as a kid. I think it was the Daddy Dick line that turned me off. I, look, there were so many lines that Biggie uttered. I can't even, you know. Yeah. I like See, but young. All right. 
See, but it's the thing. Like, why we let right, certain people... Right, with no hair about, in between. Like, I can't. But that's another thing. That's another thing about these legends, though. That's another right. thing about these legends. Like, why we let certain people get away with certain lines? Like, we would let Big L get away with some shit. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Big L was a shock, shock rapper. But, but, but that's part of the... Like, and... Oh, my God. Let's talk about the shit Eminem gets away with. Eminem oh. says crazy it's shit out of his mouth. According to who? According to anybody that got ears. Shit. He ain't get away with much. He got... He stayed in trouble. Eminem talks no, about... He does. Black, he, no, he, he does. He does get away with a lot. Like, no... I don't think any black people would get away with um just straight up dissing their mom the way he do. And talking about his baby mom and ex-wife and locking her in trunks and and for everybody who doesn't know this, that track was dope though. I'm from De- well, thanks. Um, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> just like just like just like Eminem and Eminem kind of borrows um, and is influenced by a style of a rapper named Esham that's in Detroit who was a real mm-hmm. shock rapper. And if you heard mm-hmm. the kind of thing that Esham says, like. He has some crazy fucked up. He's like horror shock rap, where he talks about taking like a fetus out of a out of a woman and then raping her like while she's bleeding to death. Like, yeah. He, he yeah. says crazy shit. It's funny to me but, that like white white rappers gravitate to that though. White rappers gravitate to that heavily. I mean, you know, I mean, look at all the juggalos and you know, insane clown posse, but. Yep. Eminem mm-hmm. gets away with saying that kind of shit. Whereas Esham, he ain't no legend. Nobody knows well, who Esham is really like that it's outside not of just Detroit. What you say is how you say it. You know? M raps better than Esham. That's true too, but he is also part of the monotonous monotone club. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, candy, and, candy. and no, that airy way he delivers I, I mean no disrespect to Eminem but I, you know I can't get into his flow like that I never have I don't, I don't I don't I don't agree that M is, I don't agree that M is monotone but um he definitely like you know takes that shock rap stuff to a different level and like he gets to he gets away with a lot of stuff like I said like no black record would get especially after you know people like Tupac dropping songs like their mom, like black rapper gets away with just dissing their mom straight yep. up. Yeah, no way. I guess that's a cultural thing, though. You know. It is. Okay, so uh, explain, uh, to me, uh, explain to me why them got so many black fans. Well, well, because I mean, go ahead. Aunt. It's not. It's not like black people gravitated toward him because he was dissing his mom. They gravitated toward to him, gravitated to him because of the crazy shit he was saying. They weren't exactly used to it. Like when I had, when I bought the uh, Marshall Mathers LP, I was taken aback by Kim. Like just the way that he did the track, the whole, the whole way that he set out and formatted and everything. Like I ain't never heard nobody rap like that before. Right, yeah, 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 that was pretty. Yeah, that part of it, I would definitely give him, like his skills, and writing and constructing and you know telling a story that shit is second to none like he's really he's amazing at doing that yeah I don't take that away I don't take that away from him it's just that it's it's certain that he was dissing his mom (laughs) 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 yeah it's certain certain shit that he does that like you know it get a pass every time and a lot of times I feel like you know if he was if he wasn't white he wouldn't get away with that No, that. you're right. He I wouldn't. He, no, no, I don't. Name a name another black, African American, or just black oh, MC God. that's gotten on, you know, wax and or whatever you want to call it now, because you know there's no more wax anymore. But whatever. Um, Big L, like you know, grandma. But Big L never made it to Eminem status. I no. think he would have. He would have. That's a yeah. That's another thing. That's another thing. Like um, like. A, a black rapper wouldn't be able to make it to the level that M has made it. Like uh-uh. even if they, even if they I got to a point. I think he would. I think he, if Big L would have lived, by the time M came around, it wouldn't have been no lane for Eminem. Really? I don't know about that. I think so. 
M, M say it himself. He say he know that if he was black, he would have sold half. He says that himself. See? So. The white man has spoken. It's true. I mean, it's, I, I'm saying though, but still, like, the guy would have would have been damn close. You haven't lost it. Uh, I'm still not. I'm still not convinced by that one. And I mean, yeah, I love no, Big L. I love Big L, but I don't think he yeah. would have. I don't think he would have done M number. I just don't. Now, I'm saying yeah, I mean, he would have like, been, been as easy. It would have been as easy for him to slide in like he did. But look at Vanilla Ice numbers. Like, I mean, you could just be white. And, I mean, and, and the the good thing about hip hop, at least, is that you can't, now I'll tell you the day, you can't be white and whack. You can be one or the other, but you can't be both. And, yeah. and that's the reason why um, Iggy got run out and she can't be a legend ever ever because you cannot be white and be whack in hip hop you can be can one you be legendarily bad <laughs> well she will go down for being legendarily bad yeah <laughs> if, it, if that's the thing then yes yeah, she will be right next to Vanilla Ice on the plaque it'll be Ice Ice <laughs> Baby at, right there and right next to Ice Ice Baby oh it'll be another plaque with Iggy's name on it it'll say um uh, what is that Glamorous what's that damn right. song she had out I, 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 I don't even know I found out I found out Steam wrote wrote uh one of them joints for her I, I never looked at them in the same after that oh jeez that's just about um we're just about at at first period and then we're going out to lunch and aunt's gonna tell us which one of our legends is out to lunch and i wonder uh, if he's gonna say who it is i think it is i, I just i don't know if i have the energy today to go there <laughs> <laughs> i just I, there's so much wrong with this person. This person. But we discussed it. Oh, that's the bell. That's the bell. That's the bell, ladies and gentlemen. It's out to lunch time. Come on, Ann. All right, you know, you know we, already, we already touched on it, so you know why not. But Lauren Hill is out to lunch. She's been out to lunch for the past 15 so years. Allegedly. Um, it's not alleged. There's nothing alleged about it. <laughs> <laughs> her career speaks for itself. Her career. I mean, she got lucky. She, I mean, I'll give her props for props. Oh, she got lucky. Oh, jeez. She did her thing. She did her thing. She came around in the game at a time where a person like her was needed, and she took advantage of it. She filled her slot. She was artistically refreshing. She was dope. She did her thing, and then she vanished, <laughs> disappeared. Poof. Be gone. But where did she, she go, gone, Aunt? Where did she go? I, 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 some pocket dimension where it revolved around her, apparently. But allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, the, the, all of those things <laughs> that I heard about her leading up to the point where she vanished became mm-hmm. like exaggerated. Like she has the the, the bloated ego thing. Like I understand she's one of those artistic people, and artistic people don't necessarily have the best grasp on reality. They don't. <laughs> but I feel like Lauren Hill was one of those people that allegedly need help. Needs help. Like she needs somebody to sit down and talk to and snap her back to the reality of things. Allegedly? No, nah, um, allegedly, yeah, allegedly. She allegedly needs to sit down and talk to somebody. Um, um she also like you know what though? She also allegedly um scared Eminem and he was calling her racist. I don't know if you ever remember him making statements about her being racist. He actually has records talking about her being, you know, scary, racist against black people. <laughs> I'm not surprised Lauren, I, I see Lauren Hill as a militant. I've heard her, I've seen a video, a couple of videos oh, yeah, of her had a conversation is. with um, J. Rue the Damager and I forget who the other person was. But, you know, I, she, she had yeah, militant yeah, I views that. and mm-hmm. I, I, agree with, I agree with some of them, but yeah, that the whole militant thing is like a, 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 it's like a tight line for me so anyway. Yeah. But in terms of the music, like I, I start getting offended when people automatically give her like goat title, goat status, when there's so many other people who have like consistency and are there for the fans, is, which is my biggest thing. Like if you put out money to go see a Lauryn Hill show, there's no way in the world she should show up three hours late for that. Like that's just disrespectful in its own right. Um, do you think that, that actually not, undermines her, um, like, actually undermines her status? You think that makes her less of a legend? 
I think it does. It reveals that she she thinks too highly of herself, if that's the thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with being confident and understanding, like, knowing you're worth and all that. But then when you're too good for the people that put you on that pedestal, then there's a problem. Um... So I'm gonna argue that your in? arrogance, um, that your arrogance actually adds to. Like I would argue though too that that might be, that might be a um a so thing a about. No, it might be a gender thing because when men are arrogant, in general, everybody just goes, "Oh yeah, that, it's because you know because he's this and he's that and because he's you know important and like." People might be jumping on her with that because she's a woman too. That's bullshit to me. <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I, I can, I can kind of see it. it. I mean, I agree. No, I, I'm not I, saying I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying I think it's bullshit. I mean, I, I think I agree. I agree with both of y'all, but um, at the same time, like. Uh, Lauren ain't put, she ain't put the time in either. To, I wanted to say that Lauren Hill ain't put the time in. The, I don't know if that either. part of it is true. I think yeah. I think she I put a. I wouldn't change the numbers. She didn't put the time in. Like there's yeah, definitely like there's definitely like people uh, like before her that have uh, like done similar type stuff. Like there you got like Diana Ross. I heard Diana Ross do that shit. Um, she does. Hyman. Phyllis Hyman did uh, some shit where she just like walked but, off a stage. But Phyllis Hyman, funny, Phyllis Hyman was, yeah, um, Phyllis Hyman, a Philadelphia legend, for all who don't know, she's from Philadelphia. Um, Phyllis Hyman had a, had a, she had a, a, a more legit reason, Aaron. She was bipolar and she was diagnosed. Mm. She, did the, she did the footwork in, she put the footwork in too, though. I mean, you can't just roll out of bed, put out a hit record, and then. Besides, your shit don't stink. Well, I mean, Lauryn Hill had more than eight hit records. She had a, she had she a bunch of hit songs. Hit no, she had a bunch of <laughs> hit songs with the Fugees. Um, and then she came out, and then she she had more than just a a hit record. Her album was like a crazy fucking beast. Yeah, like, that's what it, I, well, I'm talking about. The album. The, the, the album is the record is the hit record in question. No, yeah, but, but the one I mean, before that's that. Was see, that's where the one that see, she I, had I think that's, I think that's was where, huge too. I think that's where you look at it differently because when you think of hit record, you think of one album. But generally, people talk about like more than one song. Like she got songs. She, yeah, she, her album yeah, with the Fuji was was huge first. Like that album was huge in itself and then she came off the heels of that and made like the most outrageous album of that year and she swept the grammys like she didn't just come out with like and i'm telling you because i was there i remember this she wasn't like you know it, 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 it it wasn't like oh she had a hot song or two her whole album was fucking banging and it was everywhere. But to what? But like, if you talk to people now who put her in that place, they don't even care about the album. They like the singles. The same thing with Tupac. They don't care about Tupac's career. They care about Tupac's greatest hits. That but one I, release no, right there. Yeah, is my Tupac issue with that. My issue with that. Like, okay, for instance, because based on your, um, based on your, um. Assumption, Tupac shouldn't be a legend either because that means he really only had like one or two albums that were comp- that that would be considered legendary albums, and the other one. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about people like us that know better. I'm talking about that the average listener. What they go yeah. off the people that the people that we're having these arguments with. <laughs> you haven't lost it. You know, but they, I mean, you, I would you, think, you tell them I the name of Lauryn they like they'll give you they'll give you all her singles. Now, see, I'm I'm going to say that based off that, she and um, Tupac are pretty much running. They're running neck and neck because it, you know, part of, part of them is their mystique too. They both not necessarily you know, because most of a, a lot of Lauren Hill's album is like a lot of her skits. album was singles. <laughs> it's skits. <laughs> well, there's a bunch of skits in there.
there, but then she has a, like a bunch of good. She has a bunch of good songs in there. Zion is in there. Yeah, you know, like a lot. A lot of her songs are sing, uh, were the singles. Like if you listen to most of the album, you heard most of those songs on the radio. But 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 that's the point. It's like Janet Jackson's Control album. When you yeah. have all the singles that hit, that means your shit is a hit. Michael Jackson's Thriller, every freaking song was on the radio. Yeah, but Mike ain't Mike ain't Mike ain't check out after Thriller. Though. Mike kept going. But Mike it wouldn't up matter if it did. Mike was he on the time and shows. But, Mike but he could have been. But but Mike could have stopped that. Mike could have been a. Mike could have been a legend just off Thriller, and and folks would not argue with you about that. True. It depends on. That's it true. depends on what the quality of what you and Aaron. I thought this before. It depends on what the quality of what you did drop and how it changed what came after it. Nas exactly. made Nas made one album that completely changed the genre after he right. made it. Exactly. If nothing else came out after Illmatic, Illmatic would still be classic. And and, and he would classic, still be but, but he could still be legendary behind that. Not if he, he would. Illmatic. Not if he packed up after Illmatic, he would not. He, he wouldn't. Yes he would. Yes he no, would. No, he wouldn't. Yes he would. Y'all you, you would no, you you say that what was no problem. Okay, so like what if um Jay Z had 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 gotten his way and he made reasonable doubt and then rolled off into the sunset on a horse? That would have been it. Right. That would have been it. Because he he wouldn't be legendary. To to keep it real with you, the only reason the only reason we even consider Jay Z for this particular conversation is because of reasonable doubt. That's true. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think so. I think, I think so. Jay earned. I think Jay earned his slot in this conversation, and this is speaking to somebody that's not a Jay Z fan. Jay Z okay. earned his slot in this conversation because of his consistency. Well, not necessarily his consistency. Well, yeah, his consistency, his catalog, but, and his business. His business. Yeah, but he, okay, he did a lot, but we would. I'm not counting your business as far as. Far as as far as hip hop is concerned, no, Jay Z wouldn't be considered for a legendary status if it wasn't for Reasonable Doubt. But most people don't even like Reasonable Doubt. Are you crazy? Everybody loves reasonable. Oh, hold on. Not everybody. Not everybody. Uh, not everybody. We, we love reasonable doubt. People like us. Back from lunch. So, continuing on with the conversation, we're talking about Jay Z's questionable legendary status or not, and we're into the part of the show now where we're talking. Where we're talking about do you question somebody's legendary status? Once it's been issued and given out, okay, this person is a legend. And now all of a sudden, because we have all this new evidence, apparently, <laughs> or because all these, <laughs> all these, you know, allegedly, or all these new um, people that come in listening to these things that weren't listening to it before, and they want to shift the genre around because they want Kendrick to be number one at this point even though i mean come on yeah, kendrick number one premature way premature it's way too premature at this point but i mean do you snatch the legend status away from somebody like Nas? nah nah you smack the people that's given out the legend that legend status i mean do we nah. look at um three stacks and if everybody doesn't know I don't know why the hell you wouldn't know. Three Stacks <laughs> is Andre 3K. Okay, Andre 3000 from Outcast, one half of Outcast. I want to comment on Andre. I want to comment on Andre. Go ahead. I love Andre. I love Andre. We know you love it. We know you love it. Uh oh, here we go. Don't. Oh, uh, but given the, the, the nature or the lack of his individual catalog, I think if you're gonna give him legend status, it's only right to give him the big boy too. Well, no, I think Outkast gets legendary status. Absolutely. You can't just say you can't just say Andre without bringing up Big Boy. Andre hasn't done enough on his own. Well, they're not gonna do anything necessarily. Like on, I mean, Big Boy. In fact, um, I was I was driving another day. I think it was yesterday. Um, Big Boy, um, his new single was playing on Backspin. For his new Big Boy's still doing it. Big Boy's still doing it. He is. He's still out there. I love Big Boy, though. I like... But you know what? I hear Big Boy songs sometimes, and I'll be like, um, this should have been an Outkast song. 
Yeah, yeah. I was surprised by that. I, I had the same experience with pushing. Like I listened to joints and I would think like yeah. Miles had the, that type of influence on the clips. But to see Pusha doing it is like, oh, okay, that adds another dynamic to his character. That's true. That I didn't realize was there. Okay, and where but are you? if we want to, if we want to sit here and talk about like how. Um, how Andre don't deserve a certain status because of, you know, because most of his career is based on the group. So what about people like Tretch? Is Tretch a legend? Is Tretch a legend status or does Naughty get a legend status? Um, I don't know if I would give Naughty legend status, but I mean, I would give like Rakim legend status and he's technically part of a, a, a two man crew that has a DJ in it. But that's, that's easier though. That's yeah, that's easier because you know Eric B wasn't spitting. He wasn't, but he was still the DJ. You know, he he, he was still part right, of but it. But then that means that just means that he get like legend status in his own in his own lane as far as DJs go. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I think and and no, he doesn't. But I think because he, <laughs> <laughs> he was, Eric B is was not a legendary. Right he is not a legendary DJ. Like. Uh, we're not talking about ride. cash money like um, cash money and marvelous here like that is a flip where the dj is the one that is like legend i would say more um like will smith like fresh prince of bella you know well fresh prince and um and yeah they are i would put them on that like they are both in their own category they held their own and these we all know um, that Jazzy Jeff is a 100% legendary. He inf- he invented Absolutely. transforming, um, transforming, no and he transformed. So he's a legend. No but, question about it. But I see, I, I gotta disagree. Andre deserves legendary. He fucking got bars. He's always on had his bars. own. That's not bad. It doesn't matter. He, spit, he wrote the bars and he spit them. He he's the exactly. one that did it. And a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times, people only be digging certain outcast songs because of his verses. Also, big big boy still has to I I give big boy his props. You can't no. be with somebody like Andre and be whack. Exactly. Right. Big boy exactly. big boy get busy. Big boy held his own next to Andre. Yeah. So big boy get busy. Yeah. It's, like, it's not like he's busy from nobody by nature. You can't just get a nod <laughs> That's rude. That's <laughs> <laughs> rude, but it's fucking true. You're not, you know, you you're know, not proud. Vince is not on the same level. Prize isn't on the same level. Right. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, oh, time out. Let's talk about future legends too, though. You know, we got my man yeah, Ed too. Yeah, I think that's true. We gotta, yeah, we got the future and legends. But I, I think that he, um, uh, he had this line. He said, "What I write is a prize verse. You shit is a prize verse." I died when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> God, like cold. That's rude. That's the rudest shit I heard in a while. I love it. I mean, and, it's rude, uh, but it's, it's true. Part, it is what it is. <laughs> this, this part is definitely um, more you guys because you know, I, it, with me, you know, and my legendary, I'm uh, <laughs> my legendary status. Um, I'm kind of sitting back a little bit more, so you guys got your ear to the street more at this point. All right, well, there's so, definitely a lot out there. It's a lot, a lot of promising folks out there. You got to know where to look, though. I'm kind of running out of places to look, though. I don't know right, about who, you, who would you, who would you consider a legend of today, though? Besides the obvious Kendrick and Cole and Wale, well, I don't know about Wale. I guess Wale did his nice. He got his crowd. Uh, I don't know about Wale. He got his crowd. No he got his crowd. Wale, like, Wale. he went off the deep end. I can't. I can't. He's not can't mm-hmm. like. You need to be consistent, like you said, and, and he's not he's not remaining consistent at this point. Would you consider will we will we consider people like Jean Grey a legend? I mean, if she um, keeps. I'm not sure what she's doing these days. She's experimenting a lot. See, that's what I'm talking about, though. But she got albums that were dope as fuck. Like I don't see like any anything after is just like okay, you know, maybe she's well, going through a phase or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But that, like, for to just disregard, like, some dope shit that she put out or some classy shit, like, this week is classic and you know it. This week, for me, is this week in Cookies and Coleman. Both of those are dope, but everything else, like, man. I hate when you do that. 
that's because he, he I think you quantity over quality. Like for me it's more quality like Yeah. Like, uh-huh. like, I wouldn't it, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say yeah, that. Because, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why because DOCs, no one can do it better. Is a fucking Woo! classic. I don't care what. I don't care what he came out with after it, or if his voice was fucked up, he couldn't come out with something after it. That's a fucking classic album. And like you know, he him like you know like. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah, like that that puts you in the running for me. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you know, people gotta come out with something to raise the bar. Based on what you put out later, yeah, like, yeah. Well, I mean, my my whole viewpoint is, I think I don't think one album is enough to call it unless it's some spectacular shit. Well, it was spectacular shit. Yeah, I can agree with that. But no not, one can do it better than spectacular. You, it gotta be spectacular though. It, can't just it be was good. spectacular. It look. It, it is. In this particular, in this particular it case, is. In this particular case, yes. But that's not for everybody. It, it had that that's true, but it had some of Dre's best production too on top of it on that album. Yep. Yeah, I'm not yep. disputing I'm not disputing none of that. I'm not disputing none of that, but that don't go for everybody. It doesn't, but I'm saying but but what I think me and Aaron's argument is is that it depends on what it is you drop, even if you drop one, if it reverberates throughout the entire genre and it changes the game, you could drop the mic and walk away and your legendary status should be solidified. And this week didn't do that. I will have to agree, I guess. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. Now, Bethany? <laughs> I love I love that woman. I feel, I'm sorry. I that, know you do. I, I mean, I and like I, I like I like I like famous. I like some people too, but I mean, I don't know if they've reached what I would call legendary stats yet. You know what I she, mean? She's one to watch. She's one to watch. She is definitely one to watch. And, and um, please explain to these people that that the people we're talking about. I think all these people are like part of the nerd core, right? Well, uh, um, they don't. They not I, part I of think Jean Grey might be. Jean Grey might be to some extent. Um, a little bit. Ready. She tread. She tread those waters, but not really. Yeah. The, the nerd. The nerd core got some. They got some. Some. Some dope spirits. Oh, they too. got some people in them. They got some. Yeah. I mean, if you add some of the the um the nerd core people like Aesop. Rock is, is Mega in like Man. yeah, they're like considered um people that are legends top to tier. them. They top tier, yeah. yeah they Mega, Ran, Mega, Mega Ran, Mega Ran and Samus and people like them are definitely in that running. Yeah. But Clear Soul Forces Clear Soul Forces too, they dope. I, I don't they know o- if I get them legends they, they definitely they dope. They yeah, but we talking about we talking about people that would be considered future legends now though. I don't, I don't know. I don't see them being future legends. Like, they might have some influence. They might have some influence. You don't see, you don't see, you don't see Mega Ran being considered? Yeah, I see Mega Ran already considered. He, he a legend in his own right right now, especially being the first first rapper endorsed by a major game company. Yeah, right. But, yeah, but, definitely. Okay, and, and here's my other question. Cause we're, we're talking about influence, guys. And we're talking about, you know, but the question is, and here's the, the twist. Who do you need to influence? Can you just be influential in your little section of hip hop, or do you need to be influential throughout the genre completely? That's the question. The question. Because uh, some people will say, "Oh my God, Future is the legend of trap," and I would slap the stew out of them. <laughs> but that that may very well be their reality. You know, I was thinking. I mean, just because we don't rock with it don't mean they're not necessarily legends in their own right. And I think that depends on who you're talking about. But Future is having, he had he is having an effect on the genre as a whole. Like, he, he, he's going to be featured on albums that you wouldn't expect to hear him on because he got that star appeal. Unfortunately, that's what, kids, yeah. that's what the kids are listening to. Yeah, it, I, can't it, it believe, I can't believe I taught you and you just actually said that out loud. Uh, I, I, I'm coming. <laughs> you actually said, 
That's what it the is. kids are listening to, is what you just said. <laughs> Put things into perspective for you. Well, I said stuff like that. That's great, too. I can't. No, that made me feel old as shit when you just said, that's what the kids are listening to at Shaking with Kane. <laughs> <laughs> young whippersnappers. Young whippersnappers are listening to. <laughs> what you say the other day, the little scamp? He's a little scamp? You little scamp. <laughs> you. You, you, you little that. youngsters. But... I think that depend on that depend on who we uh who we consider for the genre too. Like we don't. I think it's certain people that like you know don't even get mentioned in the genre of uh, hip hop or rap because like their content don't coincide with what's considered. Like Cody yep. Chestnut. Right. You just said Cody Chestnut. Oh wow. Cody Chestnut. Oh lordy. <laughs> <laughs> dropping an album too, y'all. I'm, I'm excited. I like I don't Cody Chestnut, though. I don't know if I would consider that. Right, yeah, I don't know if I would consider that. But, <laughs> yeah, like, for example, like, like, uh, like, uh, then, then, um, uh, um, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. but if Cody Chestnut is hip hop, so is Chocolate Genius, and fuck you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Chocolate Genius for those of us who don't know? Chocolate genius is chocolate. He's chocolate and he's a genius. What are you talking about? <laughs> one more than you know. <laughs> All right, so what about uh, what about people like um, MF Doom for people that don't re- you know realize like you know what his impact mm-hmm. is on the culture? I think Doom is definitely a legend. I do too because and that's evident by the fact that white folks lose their shit for Doom. And he talks about some well, white folks lose respect. their shit for lots of things, but you know they really do. <laughs> they really do. White folks, yo, white folks love they love Tech Nine, dog. They love the boy. They, they, no yeah. shade to all our white people who want to listen to the show. The show is for everyone, just like Wu Tang. It's for the children and everyone else, including <laughs> white people. <laughs> for the children, but you know, white white people appreciate oh good hip hop. That's true yeah. too. See, but that go, that go, that go back to like you know it, this whole identity crisis. Like, it's like um, why you know why M why M got so many fans? Like you know as a whole, like when it comes to like you know black people, white people, but Tech Nine can't break through to like the black community. Like black people don't generally listen to Tech Nine. They don't well, because hear what you're so that's like they don't want to hear what like about all the time. They don't. They they want to feel. Said that. They want to feel. Tech Nine, Tech Nine is an emotional fucking rapper. <laughs> no, but they want to feel. With. They want to feel. They don't want to think that much. And like, 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 case in point with Future, they want to hear him cry and take drugs. They don't want to listen to Tech Nine to <laughs> try to make their minds work. He admittedly <laughs> said he don't even take half the drugs he's talking about. He and doesn't. That's like when does when does a character become pandering like you're just pandering and I was just thinking that like um but that's a whole nother show because we got a pandering show we gotta talk about but that um is kind of our show today um Anthony's gonna tell you um first I'm gonna tell you what our homework is because our next show is all about colorism and so everybody doesn't know what colorism is you know get out there and start doing your your research about you know um Gilbert Arenas and his comments on dark-skinned women and um and Jesse Williams and his light-skinned privilege and, um, is that a thing is, 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 is that a thing that's a thing that's a thing Angela Rye being the opposite side of that coin um, Angela Rye is the opposite side of the coin for um, for definitely for Tommy Loren. Who? <laughs> 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 He's like, what? What? What's the name you just uttered? That's a name I haven't heard in a while. But yeah, but, Tommy but got a, no. Tommy yeah, got a bad yeah. break. Tommy got a bad oh, break. Oh, stop it. She needs a bad nothing. 
She needs to brush this up. Brush this up. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Hell to the no! <laughs> the next Breakfast Club Daily Show consultant. No, no, no. <laughs> exactly. You heard it in violence. She don't need the shit. Tiniest, the world's tiniest violin. Can that be a second? Yeah, whatever type. And whatever type. The world's tiniest right. violin goes to Funk Flex. They lied, damn it! Tupac shot himself, no time! Cheddar Bob, Bob. Cheddar Bob shit. But, uh, so, yeah, so that's your homework for next week, ladies and gentlemen. You, we will be talking about colorism. We'll be exploring, um, light skin versus dark skin and, um, and also biracial privilege and all those things having to do with those things, culture. And why you keep saying you're not black when everybody know you black? People who call yourselves Hispanic. Oh. <laughs> um, kind of you're wrong. Whatever. Okay. If you think you're not black, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> hey, Aunt, um, what can they follow us on? Well, um, Twitter page is up there. Aaron's in charge of that. Uh, Facebook page is out there. I'm not sure what the link for that is. Um, hopefully, I get a lot better at that. <laughs> okay, you guys. We're gonna work to on that. Us, the mm-hmm. easiest place to find us right now is probably Twitter. And Not Facebook? I would get the link. Right, yeah, the Facebook link is out of whack right now. The Twitter right now is, drum roll please, at schools in. And I had to spell school with a K. So it's at S K O O L S underscore I N. Yeah, woo! But you can look forward to a dedicated website coming in the Facebook page under development, so that should be up in a week or so. Cool, 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 cool. So we we gotta we'll have some content for the YouTube page following shortly after that. Alrighty, and we'll have some little extras. Um, eventually you'll hear us talking about other crazy little things that we say um, all the time. And you'll get used to the crazy crap that we say. I feel like our little we thing. need a disclaimer. We need a disclaimer. We might, because we say some crazy shit sometimes. And we need one of those guys who read the stuff at the end of the medicine commercials really, 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 really bad. I don't know that that even means anything for this show. <laughs> <laughs> Side effects may include wrongful death, gas with a Greek discharge. There's wrongful death on this show? What happened? Four, four erections lasting longer than four hours. Seek immediate medical Well, we're not going to be responsible what? for you crashing your car. <laughs> exactly. Don't listen yeah. to him. He lies. Don't try to <laughs> He lies. He lies like Tupac. He got shit. He shot himself. <laughs> he shot himself. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, please um, tune in next week. Please do the homework and come back with us. And school is officially out. I hope we didn't offend anybody. I hope we did. Props, props to Lauren Hill. <laughs> I can't. And, um, <laughs> and um, just, if, if you felt bad tonight, you might want to miss out on a CLO episode. <laughs> that's coming real soon we'll let you know so you can avoid that one. Oh no that's a CeeLo episode I can't <laughs> <laughs> oh man that guy that guy the CeeLo episode will definitely be offensive CeeLo don't listen to the episode oh, wherever we didn't you are CeeLo on a legend. we didn't mention CeeLo as a legend we, the, because you couldn't you felt like you were drained <laughs> he's not he's not out the lunch as a legend. So he don't get some props. Well he's he's good as a legend, but I feel like if we start talking about his calf stands, then we might be here Nothing. for a while. He ain't got no solo <laughs> album. He ain't got no solo album. album. 
Now it's Barkley Count as a solo. That's not a solo he does, album. He, does, he has solo albums though. He does. <laughs> oh my he God. Has like solo what? Albums. He has one of the like Camp Adana got solo albums. <laughs> Who? Oh my God! <laughs> oh. Shots fired! Damn! Uh, is Cap a legend? Is Cap a legend? He a legend no. by association? Yeah. Legend by association? Like, he gets a star. He gets a star. He gets inducted into the Hall of Fame because Wu-Tang did. Because he's a, he's a he member a, of Wu-Tang, so. He got a medal for participation. Yo, he got a medal for participation. Yo, sometimes Aaron be coming out the side pocket with shit. That was harsh. <laughs> you know I'm right, though. And you the, only, you the only one I know bought it, too. <laughs> that is not true. I know people who have Capadonna albums. I didn't oh buy goodness. any damn look. I didn't buy anything until you got, got it. I know folks that have you got, got albums. It they all got a funny story behind it too. Like you got a like funny, funny story. <laughs> you never believe it. <laughs> you don't believe how I came by this album right here. <laughs> I know some folks that have You Got albums. I don't even, yeah. I don't own any You Got albums now. I didn't even know those existed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real fucking thing. That's like Tales from the Hood. Tales from the Hood. Hey, yo, cut that shit out. Tales from the Hood came out. Yo. <laughs> My man finally put Tales from the Hood out. I think he put it out on Bandcamp or, or that person's <laughs> song. Oh, oh my god. I All will right. shout Jason Hood off, but no thanks. Uh thanks for joining us and um please come back to see us again when school is in. Peace. <laughs> hey, you gotta get the mark mob.